How long does Earth take to rotate on its axis? From what I've been told, 24 hours. 24 hours, okay. So as you might have guessed, it doesn't take 24 hours. Um, it actually takes 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds. Okay? Really? Yes. Now, so, wait okay, a so, minute. Wait, 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 hold on. So uh, let me just be clear about what I mean. 23 get, hours. Get rid of 50, the entire, just get rid of the entire solar system okay. and watch Earth rotate. Okay? And stand there and time it. It will, that spot that's in front of you will come back around in 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds. One full revolution. Okay. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. That's called a sidereal day. A si oh, I like sidereal this. Sidereal means, means star, star day. So a you're measuring with respect day. to the universe. However, we don't base our lives on when stars return to the same spot in the sky, in the night sky. We base our days on when the sun returns to its spot on the sky. Okay? It turns out that takes longer than 23 hours and 50. Why? I'll tell you why. Because okay. in the time it took Earth to rotate, 23 hours and 56 minutes, it actually moved almost one degree in its orbit around the sun. Gotcha. So it rotates back to where it's previous line, but it has to turn a little bit extra. A little bit extra to, to the, get back to the same. A little same bit extra thing. to put the sun back in the same spot on the sky. Right. Spot. And that's a that, little nine minutes extra. That's fantastic. And why oh did I say Oh my God, just, that's, that just, <clears throat> I love I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I've only just begun. So, so that little extra four minutes. So I said we move a degree in our orbit each day. Right. I, you know, I didn't just pull that out. How many, how many days are there in a year? Uh, 365. Okay, and how many degrees in a circle? 360. Yeah, so it's about a degree a day. It's about a degree a day. And in that degree, you have to turn that little extra. So just imagine you keep having to turn your head. Just a little bit extra more. Extra amount. Okay. Because so you move just a little bit, so now you got to look back just a little bit. Correct. That's cool. Well, let's keep going, okay? All right. Earth's orbit around the sun is not a perfect circle. Right. Some t which means sometimes we're farther away, sometimes we're closer. When we are closer, we are moving faster in our orbit than when we are farther away. So it turns out that extra four minutes is not the same if we're farther from the sun than if we're closer to the sun. Because we move more than our allocated fraction of a circle when we're close to the sun and less when we're farther away from the sun. Gotcha. Okay, so the length of the solar day is changing continually throughout the year. Wow. And sometimes it's less than 24 hours, sometimes it's more than 24 hours. That's so sometimes so the sun gets to its highest point in the sky before clock noon. Right. And sometimes it gets, so what we do is we just average that over the whole year and say, sun, you are average 24 hours and there you go. Wow. By the way, if you ever look at sundials, there's a map on the sundial that corrects for the sun being early and the sun being late. You either add or subtract up to 14 minutes of the day from what the sun time reads in order to get your clock time. Wow. All right. Every sundial <clears throat> has it. So it's a figure eight. It's called an analemma. It's got a name, an analemma. But I, I don't want to talk about analemmas right now. So what you have on your clock is the average length of a day over the 365 days of the year. All right, so now we define that as 24 hours, each hour, 60 minutes, each minute, 60 seconds. Got it. Okay. Well, what is defining this? Well, it's the rotation of the Earth. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Well, well, all right. Well, how stable is that? Even in the perfect average that we're taking. Uh, it's how well you'll never know, will you? Because you're using Earth to define the the time frame, <laughs> right? Exactly. Okay? If, if Earth is your measure, and you are slowing down, you will never know this. So now, you pose the question: Maybe Earth is not the best timekeeping device. Let's offload the responsibility of keeping time to something else, like a vibrating atom. So we that did sounds, that. That sounds CCM, good. Uh, so the cesium-137, um, there's a electron transition between two energy levels that has a very precise frequency, okay? 
very precise. You can measure. What's good about that is any lab can get some CCM and measure this and then define the length of a second in their lab. Okay? Okay. When you do this, you multiply by 60. You multiply that by 60, you get the hour. You multiply that by 24. You do, you do this and you find out that Earth is slowing down. Well, you know, it's kind of old. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's been added. A, it's yeah, tired. It's a long it's, time. It's, it's a tired. I mean, if you're, if you're 4.6 billion years old, you might slow down a little bit too. You might be tired I'm too. I'm just saying, you might lose a step on your game. Okay, that's that's very sweet like, of you, Chuck. That's very, <laughs> that's very geriatrically sensitive of you. Uh, so you only would know that Earth was slowing down once you offload it to something else that tracks time. Right. And what we found out is that the sloshing of tides on the ocean floor, on the beachfronts, actually works to slow down the rotation of the Earth. Oh, wow. Okay, because the moon is causing these tides. Right. Okay. And we're rotating faster than the moon is orbiting us. So the moon is tugging on tides backwards on our attempt to rotate. Right. Okay. So it's almost like there's a, a, a counterweight. A counterbalance, that, exactly. Yeah, counterbalance a counterbalance that's pulling against what? Against us. Wow. So tides are slowing down the rotation of the Earth. And in response, the moon is spiraling away from us by a couple of inches a year. Okay. That's in response to Earth slowing down. It all relates to what's called the conservation of angular momentum, but it's a big ballet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we've been slowing down and Chuck, that, so we, what we could do is say, let's redefine the second, the length of the second, so that we always have 24 hours and 60 minutes and 60 seconds. But that's messy. Right. If every year, here's a new definition of the second, folks, go to your lab, redefine the CCM atom. So, so we, the way we compensate for this is what, how? we add a leap second. When, when do we, oh, well, it has to be every four years then we add a. No, 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 it's another, no. Did I mention years at all? I'm you talking about days, leap. dude. Days. Every okay. four days? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is we monitor when we have fell behind oh, by see. a second. Okay. okay, so when the second, when we know that we've lost a second based on our atomic measurement. Correct. Then internationally, right. we say time to throw in a leap second. Now we and throw by, it in. By convention, we throw it in on June 30th or on December 31st. And we can throw in one at each time if we needed it, okay? Right. Since 1973 or four, something like early 70s, there's been 23, 24 leap seconds added to the calendar. Sweet. So when they're gonna add a leap second, they choose which of those days it will be. When they do so, that final minute has 61 seconds in it. Nice! Yes, it's very cool. It's very cool. Uh, other things that can change the rotation of the Earth, not just the tidal sloshing, right. okay, but, Here's one for you. You ready? If Earth has an earthquake and one of the continental slabs shifts north, okay, then there's mass on Earth's surface that used to be closer to the equator the day before and has now moved closer to the pole. That will have the effect of speeding up the rotation of the Earth. Right. Large animals that migrate, okay, will change where the mass of the Earth is from the northern climbs down to the south, and they're farther away from the rotation of the axis. So not only does do tides affect the rotation of the Earth, my seasonal migration of animals affects the rotation of the Earth, and so does earthquakes, so do volcanoes, and anything else that's remapping the surface of the Earth. And you know what else will change it? The melting of land glaciers. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Okay, but you got uh, Antarctica has has land glaciers as it melts. What used to be right there near the pole now melts and goes closer to the equator. That will slow down the rotation of the Earth. So all of these factors combined, basically Earth's day has been increasing rather than, de in principle it could decrease depending on what's going on. Right. Then, I, 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 then I had this diabolical idea. We'd go set up jet engines, um, anchor them to the Earth, face them either due east or due west, and ignite them, and then the exhaust would help uh, speed up or slow down the Earth. I thought we might do that. Then I did the math on that. 
And? And no, it's not going to work. It's not <laughs> enough. <laughs> it's uh, you not enough. You would have made a good Bond villain, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, geoengineering on a, on a huge scale. Um, but uh, in principle, you could do that. But the, if you take the uh, greatest engines and fire them, the mass of the Earth is so huge. You just have essentially no effect. No effect at all. Yeah. So I'm just saying the rotation rate of the Earth is, uh, is, is susceptible to all these small effects that can mm -hmm. add up. And we deal with it, we, you know, deal with it. We throw in leap seconds. 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds. That's our rotation rate to the stars. To the stars. It's, it's exactly stars. 24 hours on average, and that average is changing. Right. Oh, man, that is, that's so cool, man. Oh, so that's, that's cool. all I got to say. I mean, it's a fascinating thing. Yeah, that is fascinating. And I love thinking about it just because of how many different branches of of the science and technological world had to come together to figure this out.